This week, we're going to be working with uh, lists and tables. HTML lists are like bulleted lists or ordered lists with numbers or letters. And uh, most of the tables that we deal with are graphical tables. Um, we'll also be taking a look at the CSS that is used with tables and lists, which typically is borders. Uh, because they make the tables and lists easier to read. So you're going to start with the web-based readings, uh, and those focus primarily on the HTML lists and tables and the styling okay, for the lists and tables. And then you're going to go through the uh, lecture demo on lists and tables. And in the lecture demo, I have lots of examples. So I think this is going to help you understand uh, what you, how you code a list and how you would code a table. Um, so I've got a very basic ordered list. So this is uh, going to be numbered. Okay. And then if you wanted to, to change the numbers, you can either use the type attribute or you can use a style. Okay, so there's two different ways to change the way your list looks. Um, then we have an unordered list, which is bullets. So the only difference between an ordered and an unordered is an unordered uses a UL tag and an ordered list uses an OL tag. Okay, that's the difference. Yeah, otherwise, they're very similar. Uh, description list. Uh, this type of list uh, can be used if you want one line of text on the left margin and the second line indented. Uh, and I just did an ingredient list because that kind of made sense to me to indent the second line. Okay. Um, so the description list, you can see there, it's all enclosed in a DL tag for description list. And then you've got a DT, which I always kind of remember as the, the data term, if I was going to use it for a definition list, that's my term. And then the DD is my data definition. So I got my data term, I got my data definition. Okay, so those are the tags you need. HTML does let you nest your lists. So you can have a list and then inside a line, you can have a complete second list. Okay, and this is how it looks. I will tell you the validator usually uh, flags that as wrong, but it's not wrong. It's just that the validator gets confused, but the validator is not the web browsers, <laughs> so it's all good with the web browsers, and a lot of people use nested lists, okay? So, and you will be using it in the lab assignment. Uh, then we get into borders, the different ways to add borders in the different styles. And then finally, we get into graphical tables and how to create those. Once you are done with the lecture demo, you are going to do the textbook assignment, um, which is, as you know, more directive. Um, I am giving you files, starter files, and I'm giving you some graphics, and I'm actually giving you an external CSS file for styling. And so then you are going to take this lovely cake recipe, which is an actual recipe, <laughs> and um, you are going to be converting it into lists. So you're going to have a, a unordered list, which is a bulleted list, and you're going to have another unordered list, a couple more. Um, you will also have nested lists and a data definition list. Okay, so you're going to be changing the list style in some of these. You're going to be adding the nested lists. Okay, and so this shows you what you're going to have when you're done. Uh, to make that recipe look even better, you are going to be modifying the CSS. 
So this, all this CSS needs to be added to the bottom of the existing CSS. And then there is an additional command down here that you are going to want to add as well. Uh, the text at the top, uh, the prep time, cook time, and total time, you're going to be converting that to a table. So it's going to look like this example. Okay, And so you will be taking that text and placing it into the table as shown. So you can kind of see right here is our table. Uh, then you're at that point, you'll be done and you're gonna move on to Hitchcock. Hitchcock uh, basically is a page without a table and you will be adding all of the table code. Whenever possible guys, copy paste because it will save you time. Uh, then you're going to be creating an internal style sheet for that. And I think I have some styling already in it. So you're just gonna be adding to the styling that I have. Um, for this particular table, it will look a lot better if we combine rows and columns. And so we are going to use row span and column span to do that. So this describes what it is that you need to change. And then this last part, uh, you're going to create a news column. So you have a page and you're going to split it into columns using CSS. And this is the CSS that you need to do that. Okay, and then once you're done, you'll just transfer everything to the web. Submit done to the Dropbox, and I will know it's ready for correcting. Uh, then uh, for the lab assignment, these are gonna be a little bit more free format. You're gonna create your own page using lists and tables. So I have some minimal requirements listed and I have an example. Uh, I did a resume, okay? Um, but you've also seen the recipe. Both of those are really good examples because they have all of the requirements in them. So these are the minimal requirements. You have to have at least one ordered list, an unordered list and a table. Anything else that you want to put in it is up to you. Uh, you also need an external style sheet. And you can see that I have the properties here, but I do not have values. You guys have to figure out what the values are because it's your style sheet. Uh, you should also have one inline style in the table indicating what the width is. Once you're done with that, you are going to create a news column page. And uh, you can see I did an example with a poem. And so what I've done is I've cited it. So it does not have to be original work as long as you cite it. Okay, so um, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, and you can do the news column on anything you want. Uh, you are then going to add links to your assignment page. And you are going to be converting your paragraphs to bulleted lists. And so there is kind of a quick way to do it um, in Visual uh, Studio Code. Okay, And so if you just do a find on a P and an angle, you can replace all of those with an LI and an angle, okay? And so um, here are directions on how to do that. Uh, also, don't forget, you will have to add the OL or the UL, excuse me, the UL tags to it as well, because it needs to be an unordered list. You can't just do the replace and do nothing else. Okay, so I've actually kind of shown you some code here, how it should look. So you you do the replace to get your LIs in. 
but then you do need to add the opening and closing UL tags. Otherwise it won't be an unordered list. Okay, and then you will transfer everything up to the web. So uh, that's the assignment. And you should have plenty of time to work on this um, because the material that we're covering is, isn't as long. Okay, it's, it's fairly short. Uh, we're focusing more on hands-on work this week. Um, as far as resources go, I have a lot of students uh, that always ask me, how do you get the colors in your VS Code? Um, you know, why is it showing the color boxes? Uh, that is because of extensions. And I have a lot of extensions added into my VS Code. And so some of the more popular ones I have included here. Okay. And so... Um, Remember in VS Code, to install an extension, you just have to open the extension box and then key in the kind of extension that you want. I mean, here's a color picker, there's color info, and then it's just a matter of hitting install. And if there's something that you don't like, you certainly can uninstall it. I mean, after you've got these things installed, Okay, you'll have a list of all of your installed extensions. So you can kind of see I did Prettier, Live Server, IntelliCode. I've got HTML, CSS support, color info. Okay, but once you install this, you can uninstall it. So it doesn't hurt to add it. And if you don't like it, you can remove it. Okay, just remember to go back up to the Explorer. Okay, which is at the top and open your CIT 180 folder when you're done. If you find one that you think the other people in the class might like, go ahead and post, uh, post a little discussion item here and share it with the class. Okay, I think that that's a really nice thing to do. Um, the only other thing we've got this week is the industry night out. Um, so this is optional, obviously it is extra credit. If you attend, all you have to do is write a little paragraph uh, about basically what you learned. What did you think about the event? What did you learn? Submit it to the Dropbox and I will give you extra credit points. Information about the event was sent to you uh, in the email. And you can also find that under uh, news and announcements from your instructor. Okay, so it's right here, and here is a link to a flyer that will tell you more information. If you run into problems or if you have questions, please let me know and have an awesome week.